Welcome to Perspectives, a podcast where the clergy women of the First United Methodist Church of San Diego share their musings on scripture, theology, and what it has to do with us. Thanks for joining us. This is episode number three of what we're calling The Journey of Hard Stuff. It is a podcast that talks about the story of Moses and what we might have to learn from it. So just to catch us up where we are today, uh, we're at the point in the story where uh, Moses has just run away from Egypt after having killed an Egyptian. And he finds refuge in Midian where he meets the priest and his daughter who would become his wife. He begins to make a life there in Midian. He starts a family. He works for his father-in-law and he is tending the flocks of his father-in-law. And one day while he is doing so, he sees a bush blazing like a flame of fire, burning, but not being consumed. So Moses takes a step closer to see just what's going on. And a voice says, get no closer, remove the sandals from your feet for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. And now Moses hides his face. He's afraid now to look at God. And God says, I have heard the cry of my people enslaved in Egypt. I have come to deliver them, to bring them to a land flowing with milk and honey. And I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people away from Egypt. And Moses, of course, then says, who am I that I should go? Moses says, I've never been eloquent. I've never been good with words. Moses says, hmm, send somebody else. <laughs> he avoids the call of God. I love this story because I resonate with Moses in a thousand times. And here is why. When we think of a great leader like Moses, we think about all those great work in massive scale and for decades. And he was a leader of hundreds of thousands of people leading a national migration back in old days. Mm -hmm. It is the time before cell phones or GPS or transportation. So with that situation, despite all the spotlights we give to Moses and his achievements, this story mm -hmm. begins with one of his darkest moments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're aware of it, He's a runaway fugitive. <laughs> yep, he is. Or an asylum seeker in today's world. There you go. Mm -hmm. Hurting someone else's flock, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. even his own mm -hmm. property. And not in a fancy part of the town, <laughs> out in the wilderness, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and out of his, this not so fancy situation comes this incredible encounter yeah. with God, mm -hmm. with burning bush in his mm -hmm. sight mm -hmm. and hearing God's voice. Mm -hmm. It sounds like Moses is having a high moment in his personal encounter with God. Mm -hmm. And we can be envious of him or mm -hmm. disengage ourselves from his extraordinary experience. Mm -hmm. That's not us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. Especially when we read this story from our hyper-individualistic cultural lens yeah. with personalized faith and right. um, all that. I've never, I've never seen a burning bush. Have you? Nope. Yeah. So. Yeah. So this, this, this is <laughs> not going to happen to me. No. So <laughs> that can be another story. And yet, when we think about what comes out of this personal experience, um, the exodus of Hebrew slaves out of Egypt, hundreds of thousands of them. Can you even see the tail end of the yeah, yeah. <laughs> crowd? Right. And this is a beginning of God's massive engagement in human history. It's a massive involvement, holistic one in personal, political, spiritual, religious um, 
international politics too. Yeah. 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 And what's fascinating about this story is how God comes down to us, mm. where we are, yeah. and God sees and hears and knows mm. in our everyday life, yeah. and God interferes mm. with our lives. Mm. And am I talking too long? <laughs> <laughs> You're on a roll. Keep going. Okay. All right. Yeah, <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And God's involvement in our lives begins with our everyday lives. Yeah. And God's engagement mm -hmm. is beyond our spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it's like God. Um, speaks to us, or, or, or Moses in this case, but always with an idea to reach so much more than just that one individual. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, to, and to do both, mm -hmm. I mean, well, that's why God's God, <laughs> <laughs> right? I, I love this story. I, I love the part uh, where God hears the cry, mm -hmm. you know, that again, that it's about Moses, but it's about so much more than that. And, and it starts with that cry. But, but boy, I resonate with this story because of the way uh, in which Moses uh, avoids the call, you know. Um, and, and there are so many characters in the Bible that avoided God's call. You know, Jeremiah, the prophet, he was too young. Mm -hmm. Sarah, you know, Abraham, Sarah was too old. Mm -hmm. Samuel heard the, the voice, but, you know, disregarded it. It must be just a figure, fig, mm -hmm. figment of his imagination, right? Uh, Jonah, I love Jonah, right? He avoided the call. Uh, God told him to go to Tarshish, and he <laughs> turned and went the other way. And I love this, though. He did that because he didn't like the people in Tarshish, didn't want to bring God to them, right? I mm. resonate with him, mm. too. <laughs> Uh, there's Esther, Esther's story. You know, she was a woman, hardly the person you would expect in the biblical time to, mm -hmm. to answer a call of God or to be called by God. And I love in her story the way in which Mordecai tells her, ah, no, no, I think you should think about this, and maybe you can do this, right, for such a time as this. Um, and even Jesus avoided the call, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus there at the very end in the garden says, is there any other way we can do this, God? Please don't call me to this, yes. right? So I, I understand that avoidance of the call and some of the excuses that, that people have given, I mean, they're valid excuses, right? Um, no one really is prepared to do what God calls us to do, right? It might be one thing to say, God, I hear you and thank you for calling me to a more beautiful personal life. But that's not what God calls us to do, as thank you said. Thank you, but no thank you. That's right, that's right. <laughs> God calls us to do something grander, right? And we're never prepared for that, whether it's a pre preparation to, to lead an oppressed people out of enslavement mm -hmm. or to simply serve a meal to strangers who are unhoused. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is God calls us to do, it always seems to take us out of our comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And we all have excuses ready for why we can't do that. Mm -hmm. But I think the probably the biggest stumbling block for answering God's call goes beyond whether or not we can write a sermon <laughs> or speak to Pharaoh, mm -hmm. but whether or not you are worthy to speak for God, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's the first mo excuse Moses, Moses gives. Mm -hmm. Who am I to do this? And really, who is anyone to do anything for God, yes. right? Uh, it would be lovely to think that God just had a legion of more qualified, more wise, more effective leaders, pastors, social servants, justice fighters than human beings. Mm -hmm. But God doesn't. God just has us, which I think is part of the point, mm -hmm. right? I mean, if we don't see the vision mm -hmm. of an improved world, mm -hmm of a more just world, if we don't have the dream, if we don't recognize the path that will get us there or understand the way in which we must be in order to live into this, if we don't take the steps, mm -hmm. the change won't be ours mm -hmm. and it won't be lasting. Yes. So God calls people with valid excuses mm -hmm. <laughs> to do better and to lead others, mm -hmm. 
And when Moses says, you know, I'm not good with words. I love this. God <laughs> says, who gave you the gift of speech in the first place? Right? And then he says, I'll teach you. Mm -hmm. right? Which is really the greatest argument against all of our excuses, mm -hmm. which is it's not about what those whom God calls can do, mm -hmm. but it's about what God can do yes, through us. Yes. And th that's probably why and how I accepted the call. <laughs> um, despite mm -hmm. my lack of confidence and all mm -hmm. my flaws, especially mm -hmm. after considering all those biblical figures, oh, yeah, none of them was ready or happy to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and mm -hmm. to this date, I still don't feel confident, as you notice mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. I, every time I get in the pulpit, I'm mm -hmm. nervous. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that it ever goes away. Okay. Yeah. So I recommend I recommend you to take your shoes off. Mm. That's where I find the beauty yeah. of the story. Yeah. God asked Moses yeah. to take off his shoes, mm -hmm. not because it's a not not only because it's a holy ground. Mm -hmm. I think when I was reading this text this time around. I was like, is, is this what God meant mm. for me, Moses, to leave behind all the experiences ah, that he yes. has carried yes. to this point? Yes. He was mm. being abandoned by his mother, mm -hmm. birth mother, mm -hmm. in the crisis of ma na racial massacre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was adopted by a racially and culturally different person mm -hmm. with yeah. status mm -hmm. and and affluence, mm -hmm. and he grew up as a person with power and privilege, yeah. and later became a murderer mm -hmm. <laughs> and ran away, mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. herding the flock for someone else and hired man. <laughs> yeah. All of those yeah. experiences might have left him some scars or wounds that pains him, but God is asking him to leave those emotions yeah. and experiences behind yeah. Yeah. to respond to the call mm -hmm. and look at me, not look at your past. Mm -hmm. and Take off your shoes, you're going someplace new. Yes, wow. and that, that's how I responded to this call. <laughs> when I take off my shoes where I have been, including those moments that I'm not proud of yeah. or yeah. grateful for, yeah or those moments that I was wronged. Mm. When I take off my shoes, I see God's grace. Mm. Even in moments when I didn't know mm -hmm. God was there. Mm -hmm. And in Methodist jargon, it's called the prevenient grace, mm -hmm. right? Yes. God was yes. there to embrace me and hold me and comfort me and mm -hmm. sometimes empower me to be brave mm -hmm. and courageous, mm -hmm. and sometimes to be patient and hopeful. So that was the grace that carried me to hear God's call mm -hmm. and say, you're all right, mm -hmm. you can do this, yeah. and yeah. I love you the way you do things. Yeah. You're doing great, uh -huh. you just need to look at me. <laughs> follow right. me. Yeah. Don't look at the camera, look at me, <laughs> right? <laughs> so the person who hates to be in front of a camera. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's right. That's and right. that's the yeah. justifying grace in yeah. Methodist jargon. Yeah. And then what carries me afterwards is the sanctifying grace. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you this, Reverend Judy, my boss lady. <laughs> sure. Did God say anything about digital age when God called you? <laughs> Oh my gosh, there have been so many things in my ministry that God did not mention mm. <laughs> as I answered the call. And the latest, oh. absolutely, is this digital age. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see the fine print in the call. <laughs> I didn't see the digital age, and I didn't expect myself doing podcasts mm -hmm. <laughs> in, to make myself not only available for people that I'm in ministry with in this church, people I know of, but also to people out in the world, mm -hmm. Googling yeah. search Moses. words, Moses, yeah. and trying to f 
figure out mm -hmm. their call. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I didn't sign up for that. And I often say, like Moses, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> like Moses, like, yeah. who am I? Mm -hmm. And my common phrase is that, yeah. are you kidding me, God? <laughs> you, me, with this heavy accents <laughs> and incomplete sentences? Uh, uh, I hear Moses a thousand yeah. times yeah. why yeah. he didn't want to do it. Yeah. I, I hear, um, you know, whenever we say, um, who am I? To do this. Mm -hmm. um, I hear a, a colleague of mine who would say, well, if not you, then who? <laughs> right? Oh. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. And I don't know about you, but my call has changed in the course of my ministry. I find once you answer a call, then you, you do what you can there, and you grow, and you learn, but then there's always something else, mm -hmm. and you grow, and you learn to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. um, but before I even said yes to the call, I, I realized that um, you know, I had the call long before I recognized it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you were talking about the burning bush and taking off your sandals. Uh, it's such a beautiful image. Um, and, and the bush that's not being consumed. Um, sometimes if I, if I equate the bush, not necessarily with God, but with that call mm -hmm. in particular, then if the bush is the call, uh, you know, you can you can turn away, you can walk away from it, you can stand back, you can hide, you can you know look, I, but boy, that call just never goes away. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go away. It does not. It is not consumed. Mm -hmm. Is it? It does not turn to ash. Mm -hmm. It doesn't disintegrate. Mm -hmm. It won't die. Mm -hmm. The call will always be there, waiting for us. Yes. And in time. Uh, mm -hmm. And in all honesty, if you say yes, you will be blessed beyond measure. Yes. It's not easy. A lot of times. Mm -hmm. But the you know, nothing worthwhile is, as they say. Yes. So <laughs> true. I'm glad you answered the call, Hannah. And I hope you have enjoyed listening to this podcast. This has been our perspective. So what's yours now? We invite you to consider these questions as a result of this conversation. The first one, have you ever felt God nudging you to do something? What are your excuses? How have you answered a call from God? And what effect has it had on your life and the lives of others? If you'd like to talk to other people about all of these ideas, then I invite you to check out Opportunities for Convergence. We'll see you next time. This is a production of First United Methodist Church of San Diego. To learn more about our events and ministries and to access additional learning resources, visit fumcsd.org.